Hello, my name is Andy Spoon, and I'm going to continue where Albert left off in showing you the experiment procedures, data analysis, and maintenance of the Coulomb's Law experiment. To begin with, we'll start off with Procedure A. Procedure A involves us charging each sphere, moving the spheres to variable distances, and recording that distance and the torsion angle, which represents the force between the two charged spheres. So let's begin. First, I'm going to connect my ground connection from the far right port of my kilovolt power supply around to the back, the yellow ground port. All right. My second connection will be also a ground connection from the back of that same port clipping to the Coulomb's balance apparatus. This will prevent any extra charges being built up on the apparatus that may interfere with our experimental results. And finally, I'm going to connect the sphere charging probe to my positive high voltage power supply. To begin, I'm going to hold my charging sphere on the very end so I don't induce any other charges in me that will interfere with our experiment. And I'm going to turn on the kilovolt power supply that I have already adjusted to be 6 kilovolts. I will keep this voltage constant through part A. I touch each sphere separately and immediately turn off the kilovolt power supply. I'm now going to slowly slide the charge sphere to a 20 meter separation between center to center of each sphere. This will create a, create a repulsion force between the two spheres, which I will have to compensate for by adjusting my torsion angle. I'm going to adjust the torsion angle until my alignment notches have came back together again, showing me that the forces have been balanced. I will record this distance and my torsion angle as my first measurement in Coulomb's Law Part A in Data Studio later in the table labeled Distance versus Twist Angle. To continue on with the rest of Part A, I'm going to reset my sliding sphere to its maximum separation distance and use my ground connection from the Coulomb balance to remove the charges from each sphere. I will also go ahead and touch the table just to remove any excess charges that may be around us. I'm also going to adjust my torsion angle back to zero, allowing it to come back to balanced again. My next step will be to recharge the spheres with the same voltage as I used earlier. turn off my kilovolt power supply, and move my sliding sphere to 14 centimeters. We encourage you to run the multiple trials for each distance of separation that you go to, just to reassure your continuity between your measurements. At each distance, we will adjust the angle so that the two notches align, and I will continue those two steps all the way through 14, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, and 5 centimeters of separation distance so I can fill in my table, Data Studio, later on in Coulomb's Law Part A.